G'day, welcome, Early Crow, episode 53. Is it 53 or 52? 54, brother. It's a bit of a setback there from P Rat on the rundown. He gets everything else right, but he's fucked that up oh, off the bat. So we we'll apologise oh, about me. that. This is actually episode <laughs> 54 of the Early Crow. This episode is brought to you by Makita. Right now, get amazing bonuses with selected Makita XGT 40 volt and 80 volt max kits and combos. Limited time only. Visit makita.com.au. Makita XGT. More intelligent. More efficient, more power, more Makita. And uh, a full team assembled for you if you're uh, getting this through your ears on, in the car. <coughs> T. Papley is back. We found him. Um, I was a little bit worried about where he might have got to and what he might have been up to, but uh, he's safe and sound. I'm looking at him. He looks in tremendous order to me. Um, to be honest, it's a little bit frustrating. I don't know about you, Pratty. But I'd sort of hope that at this time of year he might sort of, you know, blow it out a little bit and just sort of, you know, come back to our level a little bit, but he hasn't. Yeah. Uh, Tom, uh, how are you? And uh, how's the, the last little bit been? Boys, uh, good to be back. Um, just so I could never left. You boys are dominating as always. Um, but, yeah, it was the last two weeks. Um, we'll get to the grand final in a minute, but... Uh, last two weeks is of or well, last seven days or ten days been in Bali with a few boys and um yeah sort of we had a good time and um obviously the the loss put a damper on it but um we moved on for for sort of that little bit and um, had a good time to celebrate the season that was and um yeah made some great memories memories with the boys and some good stories that come out of it and uh yeah some good laughs so um that's what it's all about footy trips and um yeah it's good. It was nice for you to join us for the one episode. Did I hear potentially you're off to Japan next week? Is that uh, is that for real? So you're making me, me and Dicko go the big lifting and we could get you in from Japan. Take your laptop. We'll uh, get yeah. you on the podcast. Yeah. Your missus will I love actually, it. I, yeah, I actually could probably sneak on for a little <laughs> little, little sneak show. But um, yeah, off to Japan on, on Sunday after Millsy's wedding. So um, back into it on Friday and Saturday and look forward to uh, watching Get A Fix. It actually... At the recovery of Millsy's wedding, get a fix running at Caulfield, so it's pretty exciting stuff on Caulfield's Cup Day. It's a massive week for runners for for us, for our team, the boys. Um, let's go backwards to the <clears> grand <throat> final and address it. Um, how do you feel now about the day, the grand final? Yeah, it's um, it's a tough one. Obviously, you, you sort of you, you finish and you're on the piss for um, probably three three days after it, and then you sort of have that that down, that sort of um, set, cooling off period, I suppose, where you have the um, exit meetings and um, you sort of have you review the you review the med, review the game, sorry, um, and you sort of we reviewed it and we just talked about a couple of things and um, we're obviously off on the day, but I think we probably first of all just on Brisbane, their season was just amazing. I think from where they come from last year to lose their grand final by a point. Um, or two points, whatever it was, to be 0-5, I think they were, um, to be down by 40 points in a semi-final, um, and then to, um, yeah, come and, and give us a, a 10-goal beat in the grand final is amazing. Chris Fagan um, just looks like an absolute ripper, so full credit to, to Brisbane. But um, back to us, we, we just, um, yeah, it just wasn't wasn't our day. Um, it's happened twice on the, on the big stage, and um, unfortunately, we'll have to start again, but We'll see how we go. I said to Dicko on uh, <coughs> the episode just after the granny paps, I think that if we weren't so invested in Sydney, like, and it was just two neutral teams that Dicko and I didn't support, you would have been cheering for Brisbane hard with uh, with the story that they've uh, they've come through this year. So it's um yeah, they had an amazing season. Le- leading into the game and then very much so post it, like John Longmire's worn a lot of it. H- how is he, and how's that been as a group? Watching yeah, the because think... he's been your coach, has he not? Has he been your coach the whole time you've been a footballer at the top level? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think probably has he been. It's his twenty twelve was his second year, um, so he's been there what for twelve years. Um, and yeah, obviously, it obviously you see him hurting. Uh, we're all hurting, um, but he he's like a father to us. He's he's so uh, caring. Um, he try he works. I. I'd be very surprised if I um, knew anyone that would work harder as a head coach to not only coach the team but to 
um, help the football club, whether it's from the from the trainers all the way to the CEOs to the membership team to the everywhere. He's just got his just wants to help the club rather than just the team. He's such a club person um, and so caring towards every single player and to to see him hurt. Um, yeah, it's bloody hard, but it won't define us. I think um, it won't define him. He, he's the amount of times that he's been written off, we've been written off. Um, yeah, we'll we'll get back on the horse. And um, sometimes when you fail, you that's when you learn learn the most. And um, I think we'll we'll keep learning out of this. If you if you made it back to the grand final next year or in a year, two years or whenever it is, are there any changes that you you would make personally, and any changes that you think the club might make? Um, in regard to preparation and, and structures and things, I think we prepared really well. Uh, I think we trained. I think I mentioned we trained probably the last six weeks. I don't think I've ever seen us train that well. Um, like each week, coming to each week. Um, like again in the in the the on the T two before the before the um, before the grand final, we trained elite. We were sharp. Um, everyone was on board. Um, and like I think throughout the whole week, we talked about um, our mindset going into the games. Um, like obviously, we've we've had Emma Murray with us pretty much the whole year. She was she was there every single day in the final series. Um, so boys got to talk to her if um, they were struggling with stuff or um, needed a hand and uh, things like that. So uh, I think in that space we were very prepared. Um, I'm not I'm not sure what. Um, what other way? Maybe I think Brisbane went down a day early. Does that help? Um, yeah, you just don't know. I think you just got to be um, on on your day, and uh, we we weren't on on a day, and um, yeah, it's just it's just one of those things. I thought the day earlier things, the easiest bet of all time. Like say we made it next <clears> year, like just super easy bet. But the question that I've got that's just come to me now. The other theory I have I've had is the harder run sets you up to perform better on the day like a like a horse you know like you know third and fourth up on the quick backup off a hard run you're going to perform at your best do you think and it's this is also also a contradiction because your body wasn't 100 percent, so the the spacing helps you mm. but there's a footy team the week off postseason then a really tough prelim week off and then not a uh, a really tough qualifying final week off, and then a not a super tough prelim. Like as a if we if we were horse if we were horse trainers, it's not like the ideal prep to go to an Everest. It's obviously such a um, I suppose hot topic, but like what way does work? I think I think momentum is just a it's a huge a huge thing in uh, in life. footy in in life in anything. Um, I think when you look at uh, when you look at Brisbane. Uh, they were probably the but they had one slip up coming in. They they won what eleven in a row. Had one slip up against who? Who they lose to before Giants. they come into the finals? The Giants, yeah. And they were like it was a great like, game. Yeah, great game. And then you look at their final series and they they smacked Carlton. Um, then they they were down by forty points against Giants. Um, and then somehow come back like momentum. And then their tails were up again, so they've just lost. The giant, they were just down from the Giants um, by 40 points. They were 0 and 5 at the start of the season. They they believe they can do anything. Go in at half time against Geelong, like they were probably not really anywhere. They no one was no one could see them winning that game again. They changed their game plan, took the game on, momentum into that game, and then they come into the grand final. Their tails up. They're all in form. They're flying. So um, there's all different ways you can look at it. But then you look at that, look at it in. Um, I think Collingwood, they did the same prep as us. Um, and in that prelim, they were a combative game, just got over the line and then got the job done. And then in 22, um, I think Geelong sort of probably had a similar position to us. I think they 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 beat Brisbane pretty easy in the prelim final. So there's sort of there's different ways you can look at it. Um, I don't think anyone will know what, what, really, um, what really works. But I reckon that buy before... The finals probably takes away the that advantage of being in the top four. That's what that's what I reckon anyway. Um, and then I would I would even have a buy before the grand final, and then so it's bang both teams have a buy before the grand final and go for it. But I don't know. That's that's my opinion. 
that are not saying like that's that's just what we're talking about. Like it's yeah, um, we're not making Brisbane. excuses. We're yeah. just talking about potential opportunity. Like we're just, what, we're, just yeah. we're we're talking <clears throat> about everything. Um, yeah, definitely no excuses. Where was the <laughs> where was the head at? Like we'll just go back to the day gently and talk through some of our stuff because me and the Rolls Royce, the left arm slow medium, sat next to each other behind the goals. Um, we <clears throat> we half roared home a horse in the tab as you were sort of warming up and then it didn't get Ndola. there. I can't remember what it was called. Was it Indola? No, with that one on the way in, then we had another one like Loom to win and just missed. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Then we had Kingswood, uh, perhaps, win at like 26s into like 11s. The poor oh, people sitting around with Paps. Some dirty looks too from the Swans fans. Didn't appreciate that. It was because they were all getting ready for Katy Perry. It was just before Katy Perry was about to perform and you and I oh, were going okay. absolutely ballistic at my uh, horizontal it cut out a lot of two. It cut out at the 200, <laughs> but it was like going to win. We were kind yeah. of just assumed it would won. Johnny Allen had just peeled out and he just hit the front. And then he Stacks a pony. Blood. Yeah, It's great. Oh, obviously a shit day, but fuck, it must have felt good when you just ping that goal because we were right behind it. Yeah, it was... Um... Because I reckon that first sort of that first sort of patch we were fuck, we were having a oh. crack I reckon, and um, yeah, and then I sort of just kicked that one and I was like fucking hell, this is this is pretty epic, um, and then it was it was a pretty sort of looking back on it, it's a fucking shit day, but it's a pretty cool moment to sort of um, mm. sort of kick a nice one on grand final day, and um, but obviously it doesn't mean fuck all now, but it was, was pretty cool at the time and. Um, yeah, but that's that's all that's all will be, won't it? But um, oh, I remember. Yeah, I, 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 I remember did sort of positive light. It was look, it was a great hour. Like we back winners, and you kicked a big fucking snap over our heads. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, it was um, yeah. I was sort of like fuck are we on here, and then but anyway. What's the next couple of months look like? And obviously, towards the back end of the year, you, you missed a stack of footy with your ankle, your foot. Uh, how much of a burden was that through September? And uh, what, what's the next couple of months look like for you? Obviously, uh, I was a little bit sore during the finals, but got through. Um, I've sort of got away with no surgery, which is nice. But I'll be I'll be off um, off my legs for for a good four to six weeks, I'd say. Um, just get that right, and then get back into work and. And uh, get back into training. I can't wait for 25, uh, 2025. Um, I'm going Japan Sunday, so I look forward to that uh, with with my partner Annie and uh, Darcy Cameron, his his partner. So uh, recruiting be good. mission. <laughs> um, so um, we'll, we'll be doing that. Get back before Derby Day, um, and I'll be going to Derby Day um, and Oaks Day by the looks, um, which will be very nice. Um, and then I'll be back in Sydney. That's when I'll probably start trying to get in my work and and getting ready for a, a big preseason, big big 2025, and and uh, get back into it. And probably just on the probably just yeah, we'll just finish on the Grand It was a dark. It was a tough day. We was um, obviously tough to talk about, and um, yeah, it's something that I don't want to bloody happen again. But uh, full credit Brisbane, no excuses at all. They were amazing, amazing all year. Um, Probably amazing footy team, one of the best probably premierships you'll see from where they come from, um, especially at the start of the season and in finals. So full, full credit to Brisbane. That's uh, that's the last time we talk about that, guys, until maybe this time next year when we win one. <laughs> um, let's move forward now. Also, actually, we'll just quickly roll back. Skin folds, are they being banned? Um, I think they are. No, I think they're only banned for 18-year-olds, but... I'm, oh, I'd I'm love sort to of... get a bit of skin folds action, Pratty. If we get like a sweep going, maybe amongst our audience, we've got a stack of interaction over the last <laughs> no, little I'm, bit. I'd just I'm... love to get like a sweep on his skin folds. I could not believe the lack of um, <laughs> floppy skin. I expected to see a lot more after Bali. I'd, Fuck I'd all hate. That. I'd hate to see. I'd hate to see one bloke. Is I his name? To. Is he? Is he two and sixteen in the NFL? Oh mate, Macaroni, he's just got the bloody he's got the mud guts out, but he loses <laughs> it very quick. He's got, but but in his, in his peak, like in, in his like when he's running bloody six ten two k's, he's still got a bloody little podgy little bot, bottom bit. But it's but after Bali, it's um it's got a little bit bigger. Yeah, I just love him. Yeah. Great a great year, and he won an award too at the best and fairest. He won yeah, he's, most he, most improved two time most improved. He's got it. He's won it twice, so there you go. He really was like he—he he is just like a a young colt 
that showed you a little bit of the sales, but then you took him <laughs> home and he just fucking couldn't concentrate and he got shit yeah. wrong. And then you got into that level and you thought, that's enough. And then all of a sudden, he wins a 2K time trial in the preseason and he's got another level in him. So yeah. just remember, if you're playing at home, next preseason comes around. We, where Juzzy goes in the 2K time trial was probably a really good indicator to how his year's going to go. I think um, it's gastro. I think the gastro was the stuff that brought it down, wasn't it, last time? So pray the great yeah. gets a little bit of I'll gastro. A barley belly to finish off. Yeah. Jeez, he, he needed barley belly. I tell you that much to get, it, get some skin down. <laughs> <laughs> Cricket. Cricket's just around the corner, boys. Uh, Cam Green, big big wingspan, big gully man, the all-rounder for the Australians. Probably he's out with the cricketer's injury, I believe, a stress fracture to the back. Mm, which is not good. Hopefully he's able not to recover good. from it. Oh, yeah. Especially with a big summer ahead against the Indians. Yep. Paddy Cummins had that, I reckon, back in the day as well, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, he yep. did. Yep. Probably It'll not be, that, uh... that age, but... He covers that much ground in gully. It's actually going to be a huge loss in the field as well as uh, obviously his batting and his bowling. That's a uh, that's a huge loss for Australia. But the big bison, though, the big bison will be uh, he'll be playing uh, now, won't he? Be a I lot. actually saw the big bison just front footing a few um, like big open faced at the look like the whacker to me in a shield game yesterday or the day before on one of the TVs. He looks to be in great nick. He. Yeah. D- Parted England in one game in the in the one days that they played over there. He fucking put them everywhere. Just Matthew Hayden style front foot forward and just opening the shoulders. He's uh, hopefully we see some of that in this uh, summer of cricket to be elite. It's great. We're going to gonna dive into it bigger and better next week. But there's an exciting 19 year old Greek Australian. I've forgotten forgotten his name. Double ton on debut. The youngest man to do it since guess who? Ponting. Punter. Ricky. Crazy. The hairiest, safiest. Look, they're almost <laughs> like mine. But hairier than mine. Just it's hairy forearms that just made you feel safe as a kid, didn't they? 100%. This kid could be the next Ricky. He could be that big. Nice, wouldn't it? He could we, be we, we, we're sort of due for a, a, another young kid to come through, aren't we? Like we had. Yeah. We had. Um, Pukowski. Pukowski, but he had those bloody concussions, which is unfortunate. But yeah. we're sort of due for a new one to come through, and it's it's good. Yep. Phil Hughes, the late, the late great mm-hmm. Phil Hughes, he was he was one. Yeah, he came in real young. But yeah, we're going to look deeper at the cricket um, on next week's episode. If you've got any opinions or uh, or content to get involved with it, we'd appreciate it. Um, but pre rat is obviously you know depends. It, it was like obviously publicly he's got one sort of facade, perhaps, but privately a very very handy cricketer. <laughs> um, so we expect him to sort of come with the goods next week. Bancroft, yep, Harris, we'll who's gonna who's gonna get that opening spot that Steve Smith's given up? So um, that'll be cricket next week. Did either of you get your your eyeballs onto any of of the Bathurst? And have you seen more importantly some of the social stuff? As a man, in I think he was in Crocs. Yep. That's pink budgie me. smugglers. And the pink budgies with an enormous gut and people were taking photos with him like he was a celebrity on the mountain. Yeah. That's one day the only, one day only I, so, I want to do it. I want to go one 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 year and just commit to it. There was, there was a light, it was like a, one of the telegraph poles and they wrapped cans around it. They did a beer towel. Up and wrap the next cans around it. Yeah. So oh, they've yeah. got like they've got like four X's, then the VBs, then the Hans, and the Carlton yep. Drafts, and they're just building up, building up, building up. It was like Friday or Saturday, and it was almost at the top. So yep. yeah, yeah. Only, only caught one the off, safety uh, off car track stuff. It's uh, it looks like a proper time on that hill for sure. I love Bathurst. I, I was the only race I watch all year of the supercars. It's just yeah. on every Sunday. Kenny Clarkson watches it uh, religiously. Wears his Red Bull. Uh, shirt, which is surprising for a man of, I think he probably turned 40 the other day, so it's a bit embarrassing, I think, but he loves it. Um, I actually sent him the tip on the horse, I've forgotten its name, Pratty, that we back to win the Seymour Cup on Sunday. Uh, Midnight Blue. <laughs> yeah, Midnight Blue. I literally <laughs> sent him a video of, like, I'm watching Bathurst, mate, because he always wants me to watch Bathurst. I said, I'm watching Bathurst, and on the other screen, Seymour Cup's about to jump five minutes back no, Midnight Blue. To $22 winner. Didn't do it. Oh no! He had five dollars. Oh, he said on some bloke no. in the Bathurst. Like honestly, oh. Kenny, you can Mate. take a horse to water. Did he? Did he back the winner of the Bathurst? No, he ran second. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit! Stuff. Oh, I miss Kenny so much. That our our annual golf trips this weekend, and I've had to pull out this year. 
mm. commitments with um, the third and final kids is too much. Yeah. <laughs> but Ke- Kenny's a sort of like, I don't know if you wouldn't probably have any of these in your life yet. Perhaps you might. Pratty would have one or two. The sort of bloke that if you go on a weekend with them, they like to order the bottle of Chardonnay and get the two glasses. And then they bring over the, the two glasses and when you're in the mood to shit stir, you go, who's the other glass for, Kenny? <laughs> but he doesn't want to order a bottle of Chardonnay with the one glass because he'd look like a real <laughs> sick fuck. That's uh, bad. Shit. I don't mind That's that at good. all. Uh, shout out to Kenny and the boys on the golf trip. Uh, should we just get settled in and focus on what was an enormous weekend of racing and little the little man uh, fucking hell from the Balinese villa found yeah, a how was that, how was that set up? <laughs> the, I couldn't believe it when I rolled into the villa and um, beautiful uh, Uluatu the view there and buddy Ro, Roey's our like Roey's like the old man James Robottom's the old man he organised everything and does it all he just transfer thank fuck for him because we know where I was Probably still, probably still there. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, roll in there, and there's a projector there. And me and Juzzy look at each other, going, "Fuck! Don't tell me you can get bloody the racing dot com on here." Anyway, and um, we we scroll it down, and Cranburn's on, and the first thing is boo, Chromecast. The projector's got Chromecast. So we're going bang Chromecast racing dot com, and away we go. It was unbelievable. Me and Juzzy didn't move all day, except when we got too hot. Cheering home, bloody attrition. Jumped in the pool and got back out and got sat back down. Thirty-six of the best dollars on Betfair. Wasn't that yeah. an absolute pleasure? Yeah, it was. Um, it was. It was a. It was a great day. The big, big bounce back. Twenty-five units were up. It was beautiful. On a serious note, attrition. Uh, a tremendous training performance from Mitchell Friedman, um, <clears throat> and, and particularly an outstanding ride tactically, which Mitch would have been involved with. Um, but for for Bo Mertens to execute. A brave ride in a big money race. Um, full credit to Bo. He, he's on the cusp of becoming one of the A graders in Victoria, and rides like that on, on in two million dollar races aren't going to hurt his case. Because and slid on down to uh, Seymour on Sunday as well. D- didn't stop. He uh, he went and rode a few around at Seymour on on Sunday. That that attrition though. Cash. I think that's three years in a row. The th- uh, in the Australian Guineas in twenty three, it got knocked off only just by point two of a length, fourth up. Last year, fourth up, as you said, Dicko, God bless it, it beat Antino in the two-rack. And then, obviously, they've done it again this year. So that's definitely one to watch as a bit of a, a bit of a profile on what they do. They've uh, they've trained that horse to the minute to get it to win a $2 million race at Group 2, and I think there's another $2 million race around the corner. Yeah, well, I, I like Pericles because I thought it had the the map with the form but you know uh, as pap said wait for age form will stand up every time more than more than most will and uh you know it was proven correct because Mm -hmm. the wait for age race form the wait for age form was brightside and pride of jenny's fee in and then the maccabi diva and then on saturday within you know an hour and a half two hours we saw antino win a group one at caulfield and attrition win I don't know what group status group it was, but it's a very rich race. It's actually a disgrace, to be honest, that that race is worth $2 million because all it does is diminish the the product for the consumer at home. Like, if you're going to you're gonna bet on the 10 races in Sydney, if you want to bet, you know, mm. you don't care. But because of the stupidity of the warring states, we yep. we got a diluted field. Attrition, Pericles, Kovalika should have been racing in the, the Turak or in the Might and Power, but they weren't. Yep. So um, we'll, we'll go and we'll talk now about Antino, I think. Uh, he, his win, and particularly perhaps the ride by Black Shin. Yeah, I couldn't believe that when I was watching it. I was like... Cause I, I, um, I just... I was like... I actually didn't. What did I? I actually backed Antino and had just a little sicko, little like um, boxed exactor at that stage. Um, and I've seen Ant- Ant- Antino. I would, I would I have a boxed exacto with um, another Will Antino and and Craig. Oh. So, um, so I was. Um, and then when Antino's gone around, I'm like, this thing's just gone on bloody like a boost. The, and the decision by Blake Shin was just one of the best decisions I've seen. Anyway, and Antino's out in front, and like I'm going, go Craig, 
go Craig because Craig I could see Craig coming because Antino was home Antino was home and Juzzy's like mate why are you cheering why are you cheering Craig it's clearly not getting there I said I've got the Quinella go <laughs> well exactly or something else. but um but yeah so I did well out of a race and uh it was an extraordinary ride from Shin. And you are so sick. It, it was. was uh, it, it was as if you, you remember, like Mario Kart, and you go on like the yeah, the, the red the, and white, the, and you go. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what that's what me and Jazzy were calling it. The fucking travelator things. And yeah, bloody, not not them, but yeah, that's what that's, I was. Yeah, it was. It was super brave and, and tactically so sound, and yeah. And, but most importantly, the horse. Buddy. He had the horse to do it, and the yeah, horse did it far out. The horse gapped him in the straight. Uh, John McNeil tried something similar earlier in the day and, and it didn't work because the horse wasn't mm. up to it. You know? He was on so, post-impressionist. Um, absolute full credit to yeah. Tony Golan, Antino and Blake Shin. A, a tremendous win. I don't know what we do now with another Will. Mm. Pretty poor, wasn't it? It, it? The other thing is, does, does Jamie Carr just get the best out of the horse? That's what I was going to ask. Does, does jockeys, some jockeys just get the better... better some some jockeys just work better with horse. That's the only thing I was sort of thinking about that. Well, yeah. yes oh, and no. Only... But it, what will happen is that horse will improve because it was expected to go a lot better than it did. It was, it was, yeah. you should have seen it perhaps. It, it was, was stained, wasn't it? was $3 at one point in the day. It started yeah. two thirty hard, Betfair. It was like $3 like midway through the day as well. It's not like it was just $3 early. Yeah, and then... so as mm. the track, as the, as a really, as a, as a, it's like the grass sort of day. There's a nice track bias, and then as that sort of shows itself, people start to go, oh, hang on, which of the horses in the back half of the car that are mm. going to be suited by what's happening? And then they start to hone in on them. It also would have been holding good money in all-ups. Yeah. You know? the all-up, any, yeah. All-up, any all-up that a bookie was holding that was alive was probably ending in another will. Um, on, yeah. you go. On, on the track, what, um, what, what are your thoughts on it? Like, everybody goes on about it on Twitter and shit before they actually see the... Um, I, I the think data though, and if, all that stuff. If you're if you're doing work through the day, like actual yeah, that's work, you can have an opinion on the day. Like these nerds that that yeah. rely on data to to justify their, their opinion, uh, like that's that's pretty weak in my opinion. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I was confident how the track was racing. So was the market because they honed in on certain horses. So yeah, you, you can't sit back and go, oh, you know, the, the market said this, the SP means that, and then then ignore it when it doesn't yeah. suit your narrative. The market wanted to be with horses that were up and were in because yeah. horses mm. that were up and were in were winning all day. <laughs> yeah, My view they... is that on the day, it was significant advantage to be inside and on pace. And when I look at the data post-race on Sunday night, Monday morning, I'm firmer than I was about that. Of the 30 place getters, of the 30, there were four horses that weren't rails in run or one off. Pretty good evidence, I'd say. Yeah, yeah but I... Complaining about it though, I like. Who cares? Like that's the that's what racing is. I reckon. Yeah, I but know. the problem because problem... if 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 you um, I don't know. It's for owners and things like that. Yes. Um, for owners, it's it sucks if your horse gets back and things like that. But as a punter, you can adjust. And um, is that fair to say? Yes, it's it's more for the owners tricky. Owning, to own it's, a horse. It's tricky kept... for the sport to get the next. The, the ten-year younger Tom Papley to spend his, you know, good salary on on betting. If it's really hard for you to understand, and you're having bets on horses on Thursday and Wednesday that you've been following mm. that then can't win on a Saturday. Yeah. So it needs to be within reason, is my view on track patterns. But it's a significant blessing for us the way we bet. But for getting mm. the the next generation of punter in. And going broadside is immoral. Yeah, yeah. And then getting to the race and hearing everyone say, "Oh, it can't win because of where it's going to map." Yeah. That's not good for the sport long term, and the the poor tracks are a big setback for the participants who who buy them, pay for them, train them. Because we could have, you imagine if Get a Fix was a cult, and we went mm. to and we got to the Caulfield Guineas and it was drawn it was... twelve and was going to get back. Yeah. Pretty deflating. That's yeah. that's your chance to win. And become a stallion, yeah. And because of the way the track raced, you couldn't really do it. It's the track manager cops all the brunt of it, and it sucks. It's kind of like, it's kind of like berating Andrew McQualter and West Coast to shit next year. 
Yeah, it'd be like the... he, he's the face of a of a poor setup, and and, and like yeah. years of of failing. Whereas, you know, there wouldn't be much difference between most of the, the coaches in the AFL, but the the ones who have a great list and have a great club and a great structure and a great CEO mm. do better. The way Caulfield's pump money into grandstands and mounting yards that they want to move back. I think they only want to move the, the, the mounting yard back so that the members don't have to walk through the plebs to get to the see the horses. I can't see why else you'd do it. it. It's actually really nice on on track. But they pump money into these races. They pump money into marketing. They pump money into all this shit and they don't pump enough money into the track. Because mm-hmm. that track is poor more often than not. We've had three or four meetings of the recent ones that you couldn't win if you are rails and run. Mm. Now we've had one where it was a big advantage to be rails and run. Uh, I don't think it's good enough. And this week, this week would be interesting because some sometimes it sort of play, plays off fence. This 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 week is up is Wednesday. Right Wednesday, say? twelve meter rail. It, it's and there's wind around drying it out. It should be mad on pace and hard to make ground. That's okay. Yeah. On what about Saturday? It's meant to rain well, on go, Friday. I'll go back to the three meter. There's supposed to be rain plays. around. So God knows what will happen. Yeah. yeah, it's the, this track can't handle rain and it can't handle water, like it like it like needs to, because they've changed the the track rating from a three to a four. So they've got to water a track more than they want to to get yep. it to a four, mm-hmm. and it doesn't drain evenly. All yep. the tractors go over the track and they're compacted in different lanes. Yeah, it just makes it it'd be a, a like a thankless job, you know. Um, I feel sorry for the blokes who do it. And, yeah. You know, they must shit themselves. Like Marty Sinan at um, Mooney Valley, you know, they got their big two days coming up after the Caulfield Cup. And then yep. um, Liam O'Keefe at Flemington's got the big cu- Cups Carnival, you know. It's, it's it's a lot of pressure. And when they get it right, it's kind of like when the postman delivers your mail to the right address. You don't go out and say, fuck, thanks, man. Appreciate you. <laughs> you only blow up when he gives it next door. That's fine. Not much. from you. That is very it's good not, from you. There's not much to come you know, about. Yeah. So, good yeah, look, I, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about that from an industry narrative point of view, I guess. For us as punters, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It hurt us, I think, on Saturday with some of our early bets, but we were lucky enough to nail enough that didn't matter. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. And then, but the, the, the juice is is in doing detailed reviews of these meetings. That's why I'm always in a time about, and you know, when he, when he does it, like we gave him the full credit the other week for doing the great reviewing. Yep. It's so juicy in Sydney and in Melbourne because the tracks are so tactical and so complicated that if you can identify the horse or the horses that were not suited and went really well and then find that race where they are going to be suited, they're probably going to go really well and they're probably going to win and we can find opportunities like that. So... Um, it's a, it was a meeting that I really like going back and looking at, and um, yeah, I, I I think like deny knowledge. I I saw I saw narrative around Craig Williams getting bagged again for for like not being aggressive enough on the horse. I just don't get it, eh? I no. thought it was weird he got off the fence, but I think he just wanted the horse to have something to tow him up to. So, like in track work, the horse will never go on the left hand side of the horse it's running past. It'll always be. It, it'll have the horse that's running past on its left. Yeah. I think that's sort of what he was doing, to trick it to get another 200 metres out of him. But it, it looked at the 400 like he was going to get there. Yeah. I think two things yeah. happened. Deny Knowledge was real tough and Brightside was half flat and, and popped late. There yeah. is a risk with him at 2,000. He did run a great Cox Plate and probably would have won a Cox Plate, you know, with luck. But he, he's a very taxed horse. Yeah. Mm. And if, I to, owned him, what, if I owned him, if I owned Mr. Brightside, what, what, I would have done this. I would have, I would have scratched the, from the fee in on Friday morning when prior Jenny didn't scratch, given her the race. I would have freshened him gently, run him in the Mount and Power, which was the racing round on Saturday, and I'd quick back up him back to sixteen hundred to Sydney on Saturday in the King Charles and win three million dollars for coming first in the five million dollar King Charles. Mm. He would mm. start. If it, it and it's raining in Sydney right now, versus Fangirl, he would start yeah. two dollars two fifty in a five million dollar race. He'll go to the Cox Plate. If he draws poorly in the Cox Plate, he'll start fifteen sixteen dollars. Mm-hmm. What Speaking- um on on sorry on deny knowledge? Did he? What was the 
Did Zara? What was the sort? Of, how quick did he go? Was it just a, just? I haven't looked at it, obviously. I think I think our man Mark also blessed by Anthony and Sam being very good at training. Yeah. So this horse that is just getting better. Mm. I think the, this horse was... He rode him how I love him to be ridden, like the finishing post of the 200, and then the horse was just super tough, and he was nice and strong over it. You know, mm. this is not his, like, one wood. This is not his driver. This is like... Um, yeah, this is like his three wood off the deck on the par yeah. five. It's not what he wants to be hitting more often than not, but he nailed it. It's a great ride. He went handlebars down from about the the 900 and, and, and really stretched him out and, and gave the horse every possible. Sort of said, hey, if you're up to it, you're going to win this race. And it's run a career PB significantly, but it's not an enormous, enormous number. And it was suited reckon, by the, the pattern of the day. Do you reckon he would have had like a long lunch on Sunday or a quiet one? I reckon he would have had a big lunch on, on Monday as well. And yeah, Sunday yeah. and Monday. You? Okay. Yeah, I reckon. He usually likes having a long lunch, I think. Love it. Speaking of reviewing as well, Tico, we popped a poll out again on Twitter this week uh, for the race review, and with 59% of the votes, we're going to look back at the Caulfield Guineas over 1,600. We're going to go through each runner by runner, but firstly, Dicko, how did you see the race overall? I thought it was a poor Caulfield Guineas versus history. This race is like nine lengths off Animo's Caulfield Guineas. I thought it was plain... Um, tactically boring. I think the only horse that you can follow, and it's only because of it's, it's like it, the genuine excuses within the race is broadsiding. Yep. I think the rest of them will be over bet, and I'd be I can't wait to see if they're any good because I don't think they are, but I'm not ready to put a line through h- half of them. Yep. But there's no there's no animos here as far as I'm concerned. I thought broadsiding was a nice compound co- compact horse. He wasn't like as long and strong as you as you sort of expected from everything you'd heard looking at him in the yard there on Saturday yeah I just I'm not blown away with anything within the race um full crowd to Chris Waller he's just hard to beat isn't he like he just sort of gets in the yeah. peak this horse has improved and run well and the market thought it would broadsiding as I said wasn't blown away with him on type as I expected to be they were all beautiful horses great types but not superstar animos um, you know, your freak horses, you so you think, so you see in the yard and you're like, it looks like Buddy Franklin going to play in VFL, you know, just a different breed. Um, I thought broadsiding has two genuine excuses. There's the map and I yeah. think the track's a little bit firmer than what he wants. He didn't go straight. You now, that could be Caulfield first time or it could be the ground was a bit firmer than he wants. So I think you lean to forgiving him. I reckon he'll be heavily backed in the Cox Plate. He's running. Jamie Carr has been booked today. If you get a bit of rain, a softer track, the, the, he'll start the shortest by a mile of any three-year-old that's there. And I reckon they'll come for him. I think it'll be between him and the Japanese horse in, in the early betting. I think we should probably back the Japanese horse. And I think that if they've been running and winning and leading and winning and leading and winning, prior to Jenny will come right back into it on game day it's true that um, Japanese horse has gate issues also, Damien Lane was saying that they can miss the kick that if if that draws inside misses the kick at the valley it's going to be a tough from what I know Dicko it usually settles like roughly midfield-ish that's where it has last start and watching it uh, get over the top last start I was talking to somebody who has been at Werribee facility for a long time and have heard that it's like one of, if not the best horse that's gone through that facility. So I'm leaning heavily to what you've just said, and I'm definitely taking a ticket now. Um, I think, as you said, if it if it is that little bit softer on day, we might see it soften in the market a little bit because those Japanese horses do usually like to be on top of the ground. But, um, yeah, I've been, been reliably informed that it's probably the best horse that's ever gone through Werribee. So that is makes that me a little bit excited to watch. Bet? You're, you've... You've yep. had one, but you've like it got. It was a push. It wasn't a fail because it was um, some we've type had two. of market. So we've had two. We've got one that's clearly live, Lady Shenandoah in the uh, thousand, thousand guineas. guineas. Yep, that's been steamed. I think that's about four dollars now. We're what, on. What, what did you get that at? Like sixteens or twenties? Can't remember exactly. And then yeah, Dom got scratched, which is 
just a big pleasure. It's the first collect ever on a futures bet for the uh, early crow. But yeah, this is I'm definitely back in prognosis. Hey, hey, in... Hey, 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 let's not forget though that the early crow family are on at a hundred to one. Duke, Duke Decessa, De who's drawn oh. fucking barrier six, perhaps drawn barrier six, baby. We got what else we got? We got headline. Is, is into twenty one dollars. Yep, we've got Henline in the uh, spring champion. Uh, perhaps did you tip that at twenty sixes? That's that's yeah, into like that. into single figures. But four dollars for prognosis is definitely a bet. I'm going to take some now. I'm going to be a bit of a sicko as well. I'm going to take it's a dollar seventy five to place. I'm going to take a little bit now as well with a couple of horses that Dicko uh, Dicko tips throughout the week. Some of the Saturday oh. set from Eyes on Ponies. And I'm just going to start a a chipping away I'm, a couple I'm of on, multis. I'm on at the moment. Yeah, I'm going to That's start chipping idea. away a few little multis and a few things that Dicko tips into that to place as well to build a little bit of bank as a, as a bit of a saver for the day. It's just that time of year where you've got to go to the big lift when you do what I do. So you've got to get stuck into your work. We've done a stack of reviewing and it's starting to pay off. So that's a good yep. idea by you. And now so we've let's. Got prognosis uh, as an official futures yep. bet. Uh, to, 100%. To jump on four to bucks the, currently. To Four bucks currently. Dicko, let's whip through these horses that the people want to hear about. Uh, race 8, Caulfield, Saturday, Caulfield, Guineas. Private Life. What do you make uh, of it, Ron? Good. Um, gently improved on what it did previously. That's what I'm saying why it wasn't a super performance by anything here. Yep. Um, he, he sort of put the riding on the wall, um, but he improved a, a really good ride and uh, blessed by the way the track was racing. What about Dom Sutton's horse that ran second by point one of a length? Is it Feroce? Is that how you say it? Yeah, in the sweet spot, blessed. Um, again, went exactly to the number it had run previously, just to, like very, very close to it. Um, a good run and a nice horse. And I love what he said post-race. I uh, copped it on Twitter. The, it's a gelding, and we're gonna, yep. we're aiming at prize money, not prestige. So. Yep. He's a horse that, that they'll they'll freshen probably and find really suitable races for. Love hearing that. I'm really interested to hear what you say about Evaporate. That was another big performance from that horse, I thought. I, Point I nine thought of a length third. Better run than broadsiding. Yep. Right? And then you're probably listening and go, well, he's tipping broadsiding to go really good and be backed in the Cox Plate. Broadsiding was second up into a good race. This yep. horse is at, like, deep into a prep. So... There's certainly a lot more scope for improvement from broadsiding than Evaporate. Evaporate was a better run, in my opinion, on Saturday, though. We will skip broadsiding. We've done that one. Uh, fifth, 2.8 lengths, public attention. Plain. Perfect ride. Ethan Brown probably gave this thing the best ride of any jockey in the race, just about outside of the leader, and um, it loomed to let down and didn't. Angel Capital ran sixth, 3.8 lengths. Genuine excuses with the way the race, the, the day was racing and where he was in run uh, i thought he went pretty well the trent Busson and natalie young horse vianara seventh 4.2 plain anthony and sam freeman horse eighth 4.3 length tropics not a 600 meter horse i think better suited if they had have aimed at the coolmore and um it's not beyond them to do that <coughs> often you'll see a horse drop back from this race i can't remember what it was called Maybe it was V8 um, last year did it. Um, yeah. They, they will go from the Caulfield Guineas to a Coolmore. Um, he'd be one that I think might be doing it. Just rolling back over that then, what would you think if Private Life went to the Coolmore, the winner? If they, if it races on Freshen this prep, it has, it has to go to like those sort of races. It, it's not going to be competitive in a Cox Plate. It's going to get yep. its head kicked in. Yep. Uh, Wanarua? Plain, Tenth. but... But both of Gay's horses, Wanarua and Mayfair, didn't get the race to run how they want to run, so they didn't get to the front. They were wired. As I said, there was four horses out of 30 horses that placed all day that weren't like in lane one, one and a half, or two, two and a half. Now, these yep. horses were out in lane three. They were three wide, no cover, one of them, and um, yeah, they were poor, but they were never going to be competitive after 600 metres of the race. Yep, and then just to put a full stop on that race, mate, if you were going to follow one going forward, which one would it be? Broadsiding. Yep. Love it, mate, love it. Was there any other race we wanted to touch on from Saturday? I thought Jimmy Stars were talking about. Um, mm. This horse pissed in and did it against the pattern of the day. Um, was so, so solid in betting and it was never going to be where they wanted to be in run to win. Um, this horse is a group horse. This horse is flying. I'd love... What I would love 
as a punter is not what I would do as an owner. I'd love this horse to be in some good race. We find out tomorrow morning it's accepted to run at Caulfield on Saturday because he's deadly at Caulfield. Mm. The chink will be that he'll go next start might be at Mooney Valley or it might be at Flemington and there might be a track at Mooney Valley where he can't run on. Or it's, 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 all this horse is going to do is go up and up and up in grade, up against better, faster, stronger horses. So uh, I thought he was the performance of the day almost. My I love what he did, and I don't know what his ceiling is. You got to remember, he came over from New Zealand, and he didn't. He went sort of straight into it. Yeah. Remember that day we backed him, perhaps at Bendigo. Yeah. And, and Blake Shin what like, zigged and he zagged yeah. up the guts, and it just got there. We we're like, thank fuck. Then it went to. Cranburn, I reckon, and it pissed yep. him. Yep. Then it went to Flemington and it failed and then it failed. But it was the end of a long prep. It looked to us at home like he just was third and fourth and fifth up. But he was actually coming off a Kiwi prep. Yeah. And this is his first full Kieran Ma preparation. Mm. New improved horse, flying. The most exciting horse from the meeting for me. Believe that it's going to the Sir Rupert Clark over 1,400. It won't want to cop another penalty from another race of winning it, I wouldn't have thought, because it'll get in with like 54 kilos in a Rupert Clark. It's been $9 into $3 in the Rupert Clark. Mm. Yeah, well, that's a setback for us. But... Yep. So when's the Rupert Clark? After the Flemington Carnival? Yes, correct. Back to Caulfield. Back to Caulfield, 1,400. Hard to beat. Return to the scene of the crime. Um, I thought Kurianagi, that'll be it for it. We're not following it forward. Completely blessed. Average race, Aviatrice, outstanding performance, like rode the speed and, and was enormous home. I don't know what, top of my head. Third fastest last four, two, and 100 of the whole day sitting outside the leader. Uh, Herman Hess, great ride. Let's pray to God it's the right form, boys. <laughs> Zeus, Allah, Bilbo Baggins, because Herman Hess beat Pesto, and Pesto should have beat Herman Hess at Mornington last start. Pesto goes to the races tomorrow at Caulfield in a $130,000 race and we paid 37000 for him so uh, if God exists and he's up there he'll make sure Pesto wins tomorrow for us I can't wait I'll trick Star Dico. fuck this it's, horse it's, it's killed us three times <laughs> this it's, horse it's, it's fucking it goes alright yeah no wait here big time fastest last 600 metres of the day Savage the line. The only solace I take out of all of this, because this horse is my kryptonite at the moment, is the market was with me. It, she was $5 out of seven fifty. I think 5 to 6 six fifty is the way the track was racing. Mm. But then the rest of it, everyone was, the, the, the people who moved the markets were seeing what I was seeing. We were all wrong. She's a very good horse. She'll probably go to a Coolmore. And um, is you just sort of have to roll the dice. Um I think that's where she'll go. I think Antino's going overseas. Um, yeah. The Nine Knowledge backs up into a Caulfield Cup. Really nice setup. No weight. And um, yeah, I, I thought second. the disappointing horse, but the the potential money maker will get eight dollars, ten dollars, twelve dollars, fourteen maybe next time it goes around. See you in heaven. To Flemington, back to fourteen, even twelve hundred meters is a bet. They seem to be intent on getting her out over a mile and I don't think that's what she needs or wants. That's my wrap, boys, of Caulfield, just about, if there's no more questions. thought the genuine black bookers out of the meeting were Ma Harbour, <coughs> Charmstone, and Yellow Sam, all capable of um, of going on with it, all at the right stages of preps to be really competitive in good races throughout uh, the rest of our spring carnival. Love it, mate. I reckon... Oh. That'll just about do us for uh, episode 54 of the Early Crow, unless there's anything else to touch on. No, uh, I nah, just the really reviewed. We've got Sydney. a big week of runners. So we've got Pesto tomorrow, Mailbag, Bloodstock. We've got a double head of Mailbag, Bloodstock Friday at Moe. Um, potentially the Dim Sim King. Shout out to CTW Excavations. They will go with the big boys. Won't. Find them on Instagram. Um, the Genius. And Keats running around at Moe in different races. We've got Getafix rocking and rolling at Caulfield on Saturday. And then there's more runners next week. So it's a it's a great time of year. Um, let's hope the, the good times keep on rolling. The last three Mailbag Bloodstock runners in Victoria have all won. 
including uh, Marshall Music, who was two dollars and fifty into a dollar fifty. There at sale, we've got our socials just jam packed at the moment. We are <coughs> we are like we've got Wolf Den on the ropes. Uh, outstanding behaviour from them. I thought on Saturday that they're like a small backman just cutting his teeth, and all of a mm. sudden they got to play on T Papley and he kicks one. They, they they didn't like attrition. I'm telling you now. I don't know this for a fact, but I'm telling you they didn't like it. And they seen Pat sent through attrition, and it's just a complete cover. We've got Antino on them. We have got all the momentum versus Wolfdown boys, and we will look to put our foot down on Saturday, Caulfield Cup Day. There'll be yep. eyes on ponies. There'll be golf. There'll be NFL. Where our man, your man, Justin McInerney, in the deepest hole we've ever seen. Um, Matty Punt's not far behind him. If you remember, the crust in the NRL was doing putridly, and then he went on one of the greatest upswings of all time. I reckon I'm going to take his three selections every week as a little little doubles because he cannot keep going like this. It has someone, to turn I saw a comment. I saw a comment on social. It's like it's actually almost impossible to be going that bad. It's... Yeah, <laughs> that was because we're betting on a flip of the coin. It's like dollar dollar ninety of each. Yeah. <laughs> Juzzy two and sixteen is almost statistically impossible from Jacob Flanagan. All time from you, Jacob. Great chat, All time. Yeah, great right. chat. Oh. We'll be back on Thursday afternoon with Paps for the captain's run. Potentially this week or next week, you'll also get Dan Bowman's NBA futures mail, which was a fill up last year, so don't miss it. And we'll back up and do um, You Do You again. I don't know what I'm going to wear, but I'll be wearing something just a little (laughs) bit different. Send in any horse you want, and I will tell you uh, why and how it can win. The post will go up on Instagram and Twitter on Wednesday for a Thursday show. So make sure any Any video, Any video video comments will get to the tippy top as it gets bigger and busier. I'm not going to be able to do like 100 a week, so, you know, might cut it at sort of 50. Any video comments that come through, I won't be sifting (laughs) through them, so please just put the horse name and number. Yeah, Sydney as well. I'll give it a crack. Fuck it. Yeah, Yeah, Sydney horses. Love it. Good. Yeah. Put them in. Please put the horse name and the horse number and the race number. It'll make it easy for me, but yeah, let's get it going. You got around it last week. Just clarify that again, how you want them to be fed to you, please. Race number, horse number, name of horse. Make it so much easier for me when putting it together. Perhaps you can't look at it till we do the show. Um, it's been outstanding to have you back, my man. You're looking we'll outstanding. Back, outstanding. Great show. Have a great week, whatever you're doing. Be nice to each other. Gamble responsibly. 1-800-858-858 or visit the website. This show, like every other show we've done, was brought to you by Makita. Right now, get amazing bonuses with selected Makita XGT 40 volt and 80 volt max kits and combos. Limited time only. Visit Makita.com. Makita XGT. More intelligent, more efficient, more power. How good are my lungs going from the sea? More Makita. Makita. Perfect now.